I was misunderstood in thinking like, oh, the church is against us or the church is a dictator and doesn't want me to be happy. Uh, and in reality, at the end of it, I saw, you know, if you give your life to Christ, it's really, you're living your best life. Welcome back to another episode of PPK. Back at it. What's up, boys? What's going on? We, what's as up? you as you can tell, have a special guest in the studio. We are joined by a dear priest friend of ours, Father Peter Patros. What's up, everybody? It's uh, it's been a long time coming, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm happy to finally be out here. It's honestly like a quick quick way to get get on here but uh i'm happy to finally be on with uh, the goats here <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh we normally start off father with just kind of inspiration so i'll kick it over to mix for a quick sec uh well father peter is our, our dear friend and one of the first people that i think me and county looked at not just as a priest but actually as someone like a brother like a friend someone that we could actually talk to we don't just see the the cleric we don't just see that we see you know so one of the bros and um, obviously he will explain more he's a chaldean priest he can teach us a lot about that but also just being a young priest we don't got to reveal the age but he's young (laughs) and um and kind of what that's like and kind of you know open it because i know a lot of people have no clue what priests do what they're supposed to do they hear a lot of things about the news about them being creepy and all this other stuff that's (laughs) unfortunate for sure so hopefully we can kind of you know uh break those stereotypes or whatever it is and and show people that you can be cool and a priest at the same time. Yeah. Um, maybe the cool part is, like, less. <laughs> I definitely feel, like, the dadness of it. You know how people call us father? Mm-hmm. I think my dad jokes increased, like, a good 200%. Right when you were ordained, right, father? Right, when you usually feel it right away. <laughs> yeah, you feel the, like, the, the priestly character upon you through the blessing of ordination. But then also, you also feel like a father, and like every man is called to be a father, and like now, as a priest, you know, the dad jokes just increase, <laughs> and it's bad. Coming I out. actually made one during the homily one day. It was bad. I was talking about Zacchaeus one day, mm-hmm. and how he was, uh, you know, him climbing upon the tree, he was really going out on a limb. <laughs> Everything was totally silent. <laughs> Only yes. two people laughed, and it was really bad. But at least got, I got those two laughs yeah. out of it. And ever since then, oh, I've, held, I've held off on that. So if you didn't get that joke, you're going to have to go read about Zacchaeus in the, uh, <laughs> in, in the, in the Bible. Okay. So. Yeah. I would have gotten it, Father, just so you know. I would have gotten that joke. Would you have laughed, though? I would have. I would have uh, inside. Because it would be, it'd be weird. I struggle with you know, being reverent in Mass. I probably would have. I mean, unless it was like outside of the context of Mass. Sure, right? sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah. I, I, I see where you're coming from. <laughs> so... But, that's so, where we learn from you. <laughs> so we wanted to uh, kind of bring Father on, as, as Miko said, to really kind of uh, understand that our priests are human, right? They're not like once they put the collar on and, and answer such a huge, huge call mm-hmm. that all of a sudden um, they, that you just become robots or don't have any feelings or don't have any um, real struggles or don't you know appreciate some of the, the things in the secular life um, like hoop in it or something like yeah. that right or food or whatever it may be right um and the other thing is yeah we don't i think we're going to do an episode on this but you don't just because you become catholic and definitely when you become a priest you don't just like lose your swag all of a sudden right yeah i think you gain some isn't there like a chrism for swag well i mean this is a cassock so <laughs> and i have like blessing crosses and stuff like that so we definitely the swag uh does increase it does yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's only uphill from here honestly yeah, yeah. 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 So, so Father, maybe you can, I, I know we've heard um, kind of the longer story of your, of your conversion, but just for the viewers out there, because I think Miko brings up a good point. Because most time when they think about priests, uh, maybe they think, just like they think about God, right? Like somebody who's like old and outdated and yeah. out of touch, out of reality versus somebody who's uh, a fairly young, a newly ordained priest. So how long have you been ordained as a priest? So I've been ordained for... About a year and a half now. Uh, I was ordained uh, December uh, 2018. Uh, So it's been about a year, a good year and over a half. Yeah. And you're from originally from? 
Yeah, I'm f I'm originally from uh, San Diego, California. My I was born and raised there. I'm the youngest of uh, six children, and uh, my family is originally from Iraq. All my brothers and sisters were born uh, and raised in Iraq, and um, I'm the youngest that was born here. Um, I was ordained again. I entered seminary when I, I right after high school, and sort of my priestly journey is like exactly what you guys are talking about. Like my original like view of and like view of what a priest was, was like this old gray haired guy that, you know, maybe smiles maybe once or twice a year when he's like wishing us happy Easter or Merry <laughs> Christmas. Not really happy though, because he sees all these people that he hasn't seen in like a good six months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so that was my first interaction and then it wasn't until i met a younger newly ordained priest named father andrew yunan shout out to him mm. um i just got your book father shameless plug yeah. actually yeah i his, just got your book thoughtful theism in my in, in my amazon delivery today so yeah thanks to this priest here you're welcome father andy <laughs> um but in him i finally i i saw a priest that you know number one was making jokes he likes marvel and like reads comic comic books but at the same time he's like a human normal human being that loves god and loves bringing people into relationship with christ mm -hmm. and sharing that which you know he has and brings it out to the rest of the world you know so um i thank father andy for that because in him the the priestly vocation that i had this calling to be a priest it was really natural it wasn't this like oh my gosh I had this crazy experience where I'm sitting in the chapel and like God speaks to me in the silence and I I feel this crazy um, you know ecstasy, ecstatic moment of God. Mm -hmm. It was more so like I looked like a kid looks at a firefighter and is inspired to be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I saw Father Andy and I loved that and I feel like through him God sowed the seed of this vocation in me. That's awesome. Um, when when I think about that that example that you have and now you're an example for other people how does it feel now being on the other side like with with i mean even you think about keone and miko and maybe for other young people that you run into in our community that may feel how you felt how we just described how does that feel for you now being on this side of it yeah um you know i don't really think about it too much you mm -hmm. know because with father andy i don't think he's consciously trying to like marvel you know what i mean <laughs> He's not con consciously trying to, you know, be human, you know, he just is who he is. And mm. that, you know, just, you know, it has an effect on people. And for me, like the fact that, you know, in the things that I like, I like playing basketball. I like playing video games from time to time. You know, I think this people are just like, what? Like it, it's, it's a contradiction. You know, people think if you're a priest, you're like an angel or, if you're a priest, exactly like you're a creep or something like that. <laughs> That's why I don't keep just a mustache. I just have a beard, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, 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 you hear stories down the line like, man, Father Peter, you have no idea what your you know presence has done. And, and to be honest, I'm just like, what? I'm just an awkward, young, newly ordained priest that's just trying not to mess up. Um, but really for other people, I think really the 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 ordained the the priestly uh, character that you have and you're at the moment of your ordination it really shines forth through you and god works through it you mm -hmm. know he works through your your personality and uses that as an instrument to sanctify others mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say i think I've shouted you out a couple times, Father, in case you... Uh, no, no, I, yeah, heard, I heard it. I heard it. Uh, I've given you a couple <laughs> shout-outs. So now people know they can put a, a, a face to the name. Right. Yeah. But um, I think something that Miko and I have experienced that's different than the other priests, because, you know, just growing up in the faith, we've had priests over, and we've had dinner with them, and we've developed, you know, a cordial relationship with them. But I think with you, it's been almost like you're... Who you are as a person, like, almost shines through the cassock and just hits us right in the face mm -hmm. and we see you as 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 more than you know, an ordained priest that someone we just had to kind of like hi father about yeah, respect yeah, you sure. know and i think obviously there's there's a place for that and we obviously the respect is there but um 
I can just text you when I need, you know, when I just need some advice or just ask for your prayers or if you're online and you want to play like 2K or something <laughs> like, you know, it's like that, the, I don't know, the dichotomy there, I guess, like the, the things that you could do, like, let's, you know, let's go play basketball on Saturday. Like the, mm-hmm. those things that I think a lot of people don't understand that that's possible with a priest. Mm. And, you know, and like the fact that I can in the same day go to confession and get my sins forgiven by the same man who is guarding me on the court. Yeah. Is something you're that taking is, an L from not really. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah, we were gonna. Yeah. <laughs> that, that I think that's something that um, a lot of people can really benefit from. I think that's just like a hidden gem in our faith. Um, so I, I think that's, it's just such a gift to be able to experience that. Yeah. Praise God. I mean, I think that's one of the beauty, beautiful parts of the priesthood because, you know, in one moment you can be, uh, like with Jesus and, you know, the, the, the disciples are eating and drinking with him maybe at one moment and the other, the other moment they see him transfigured. They're like, what? Yeah. Not saying that I'm that, but like, uh, on the one moment we're balling and like playing basketball or, you know, whatever, doing very normal things. And the next moment, you know, I could be, you know, doing anointing of the sick for someone or Mm -hmm. doing a baptism or welcoming someone into the church uh, or, you know, doing confession. And that heroic and beautiful part of the priesthood, that was one of the things that attracted me to it and, um, you know, made me aspire and desire the priesthood uh, so much more. Yeah, I, I wanted to touch on something because me and Kenny always talk about uh, music, and I know you're a huge music guy, and you talked to us about your um, just your whole conversion, how much you were embracing music. That's how me and Kenny always been, and especially like the transition from listening to what you always been listening to yeah. into like, okay, I understand that like I shouldn't just listen to foreign whips and chains and women and all this stuff. And you kind of want more, you desire more, even though you know, like, oh man, this still kind of slaps though. Like, deep in your soul, you're like, dang, I, I don't know if I can let this go. And this album's really good. And so, me and Kony have struggled with that a, a bunch, I think, and just trying to like find ways and find new artists or just kind of be like, you know what, let's just listen to podcasts because we can't figure out who to listen to right now or something like that. And so, maybe you can kind of touch on that a little bit. Yeah, actually, through my, it was actually part of my vocation story. Um, when I was, uh, so originally I was in seminary for about a year or so, and then some stuff happened when in seminary and uh, kind of saw that my weaknesses, my personal weaknesses were something that you know I couldn't get over and were actually an obstacle for me to become a priest. One of those, excuse me, one of those was um, my inability to like tell a story or my lack of good speaking. Um, people would know me as the guy that couldn't like tell a story if my life depended on it. Like they'd missed a punchline or I couldn't tell a joke. You know what I mean? So I thought that was a big obstacle for me as a priest. Obviously, every part of your life is to preach mm-hmm. and to, to, to be a part of that in a public way. So for me, it was like I left, I ended up leaving the seminary and then uh, I ended up like really filling my life with things that were not of God. So I ended up becoming like a musical disciple. You know what I mean? Where I, whereas I would be like studying and like looking into scripture and stuff like that, I was really getting into the culture, you know, trying to be relevant, you know? And because I thought me as a priest, I people wouldn't listen to me because they'd think I'm young and naive. And what does this guy know? He doesn't have any experience in life. Because uh, I was, I'm the youngest child, and I was sort of sheltered. So, a part of that it was, uh, it was pretty interesting because I, I ended up listening to Logic. I don't know if many of you know him. He actually retired with his last album, No Pressure. <laughs> um, so I ended up like listening to him. I was, I was with him before he came out with his first album, and I was like going up to people, hey, have you listened to Logic? Hey, uh, like people, like this, like a uh, actual apostle, like hey, have you listened to the? to the good word of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I was going up to people like, did you hear Logic's new Young Sinatra album? Like, did you hear, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So um, it, it became like that. So I filled my life with this. And it wasn't until like at the season of Advent came up and I wanted to like hone in on the voice of God. And I ac- actually ended up fasting from secular music. And only the only music I listened to was either like hymns or 
you know, something of that nature, or else it was silence. And I was I shared a room with my brother. When I was sharing a room with my brother, uh, he ended up. We you talk and like you know how you you have those like late night conversations, mm-hmm. and he ended up. I no longer heard his like yeah yeah that's crazy or like oh okay okay. He got silent and I'm like looking over. The, the guy's falling asleep, so I didn't have anyone to talk to because and I had no music to listen to and the only way, only person I could talk to was Jesus. And so fasting from that allowed for some silence. And then, then I was open to you know the vocation uh, again of the priesthood where God was like sort of calling me back. And that was the first time within that year I made an honest prayer of surrender to Jesus. To Jesus. So yeah, that's a that is a journey, right? When you and I think we've talked about it before in a couple of different episodes about the uh, the silence. And you know we've been obviously we give some shout outs to Father Peter, especially because. The, the redirecting to Father Jock Philippe, we've been bringing him up in a lot of our, our podcasts as well and maintaining that interior peace. But it's, I think it's key for those who are out there, especially a lot of our listeners. Um, it's a pretty wide range of folks, right, that are that probably mean well and intend well. Not all of them are Catholic, not all of them are even Christian for that matter. Mm. Um, but it's what you're saying, Father, is to really carve out that time and detach and disconnect from the world so you can actually hear the message of god so some people may feel like they don't i don't, I don't this god thing like i'm intrigued i'm in i'm in i'm enticed by this but uh, i'm not experiencing what you guys are experiencing well maybe there's just too much noise in your life yeah i mean it got to the point where i was from the car to the shower to the time where i was going to bed there was no moments where i allowed for like actual just pl- plain out silence not to say that music is bad, you know, mm-hmm. music is actually uh, like in itself, it, it's a good thing, you know, God gives it to us to uplift the soul. Obviously, there's good music and then there's bad music. There's some music that can, you know, be good for your soul and uplift your soul. And there's some music that could just uh, like emphasize and, you know, bring out in you like aggression type mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like there's different opinions and different theories about this, but personally, when I would be out late night driving, like bumping some some like hardcore rap, I would notice, okay, 90 miles per hour on the dashboard, <laughs> and I'm like automatically thinking of that, about that person that, you know, did me wrong, and I'm like, <laughs> oh man, you know? So it, it, it brought into the, brought these things in me that, you know, I was like, man, this is weird. Not to say like, you know, put that aside so i was just like you know let me let me separate myself from this a little bit because mm-hmm. i have an unhealthy relationship with it mm-hmm. so um in that sense i just fasted from it you know like you can you know if you're having a bad relationship with something you put some distance between it until you come back again and you can able you'll be able to interact with it in a more ordered way yeah i was gonna say uh, that was kind of similar to miko and i when we did exodus 90 <laughs> and i remember we were reading through the the things that we can't do and it said secular music and i was like immediately sweating like dude yeah. what am i gonna do for 90 days no music i would literally all through high school i would get new music i would check every night before bed and so i would get all the the newest songs so the next day i go to school back like, bro did you listen to this did you listen to this song like i've already been on it i've already listened to it all night i got the leaks exactly yeah. <laughs> I, I was a leaker like la leakers dude. yeah there <laughs> and, you go. yeah so <laughs> I was I took a lot of pride in that, you know, because I knew all the new artists, all their songs. I got to try it out, like, hey, listen to this dude or not, you know. Um, Hot new hip hop. Exactly. There you go. Uh, so Exodus 90 comes and I'm like, okay. So Miko, uh, it was more me, but I talked to Miko about like any Christian artist and I searched through the depths of the yeah, earth. You're grinding, dude. I, I spent grinding. hours finding Christian artists that weren't like Lecrae, you know, like Lecrae, yeah. is, he's cool, but. Yeah. Not, you can't just listen to Lecrae for the rest of your life. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so um, even years. even NF, I like NF a lot. But there's like a, I feel like there's a mood and a time and place for NF. Yeah, NF is like kind of... He's really he's intense. Blue. Yeah, he's intense. And, yeah. and so I found a lot of really good artists. And I think Miko and I want to do a PPK perspective on that. On just like... There's a lot of Christian artists that sound like secular artists. They just have a different message. And I think that's something that we're really striving for. We don't want to, like, the thing that we love about rap is, like, the flow. We love the beats and everything. Obviously, their message is flawed. And we wanted to find music that has the same 
good components, but with a different message. And yeah. we've got to find some glimpses of it. Um, but that was definitely something that was hard. But I think now, after doing that Exodus 90, now that it's over, I feel like when you do listen to secular music, you have a different lens. Things start to stand out more. Like yeah. the words, like, oh, dude, I was listening to that this whole time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that was normal to me. Yeah. And it, and like you get like a shorter fuse for that stuff. You're like, yeah. okay, next. Like, because I think, like you said, once you're able to silence for like a second, God starts to shed light on those areas in your heart that were dark. And it, it starts to, he just reveals it to you slowly. And then you're like, Ooh, I should probably change. Um, and I, so I think it start like you said, that the starting with just kind of fasting from something. And if it's taking too much of a, a point in your life, just to let go for a little bit and he'll start to like work. Yeah. I mean, cause really you don't really understand it. I mean, in, in, in the beginning I was like, man, this is like fasting from this. Like that's messed up. Like, why would you do that? Like <laughs> I listened to it, but I don't believe in it. You yeah. know what I mean? I like, I just like the flow. I like the, I like the beat. But, like, if it's in your face, you don't realize, like, everything that's going on. It's, it's not until, like, you take a step back and you see the whole thing right. and what it's for and, like, the way, you know, everything that you consume, you know, you're bringing that into you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Whether you listen to it, whether you believe it, whether you agree with it or not, um, there's a real uh, effect that goes on, um, especially because you're consuming this stuff. And sometimes they they the people that wrap this they want to send it out there and you know they want to perpetuate that mm. i guess so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you have something to say mix uh yeah i think the silence thing is huge because i i door dash so i'll be trying to listen to podcasts stuff like that and then sometimes i just like you know i tell myself you know why can't you just sit here and not look at your phone and just wait for your food like a normal human being and not have to distract yourself and just sit there and be there and i think that's such a thing that's just key thing that i'm trying to learn like just silence and stuff like that Cause I'll be in my bed. I'm always like watching YouTube until I fall asleep. I'm just like, dude, stop watching YouTube. Like, be a man. Step <laughs> up. Take control. Take control of yourself and just lay there. Can you just lay there. How about that? You know, because my <laughs> mind's always going. I'm trying to distract myself. But I'm also like, that's just kind of what we grew up in. And I've had, I've had an iPhone for I don't know how many years and all this kind of stuff. But I think that's so key because it's like you can learn so much in those moments and those times where you can like almost like reflect without having you know being the child or something that because that's what you're doing basically your mind just running when you're not i'm just looking at people just thinking all these certain things i think that's a huge step for see our generation is like being able he talks about all the time like if you can just sit there in silence for an hour like i mean most people can't even do that but i think that key component of like just trying to silence your mind i think is such a key um part in trying to grow in virtue and in listening to what god has to say i think mm-hmm. for sure yeah so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, you said you're from uh, family, heritage, right, is from Iraq, um, and we're all Catholic in this room, and one of the things that we wanted to bring up is the, you know, as we try to educate uh, our listeners on faith in general, but definitely the Catholic Church, right, to dispel some, we've done stuff on the true presence, we've done, um, you know, podcasts on what it means to be priest, prophet, king, as baptized mm-hmm. Christians, um, so it's kind of cool that we got a priest sitting here next to us. But you're you're not part of what people in who are listening that may be more familiar with the Roman Catholic Rite, mm-hmm. right? And um, you're part of the Chaldean Rite. Mm-hmm. And you know when we right, think, <laughs> right, right with the G H T, not the right R I T E, which yeah. is part of the Chaldean Rite. But I'm right when I say that he's part of that right. Correct. You with me? <laughs> you guys, you paying attention or what? Uh, so uh, a lot of people are like, what are you talking about, right? Yeah. Um, Eastern church, Western church. Um, sometimes we even get rites and churches mixed up. So we just say, oh, yeah, there's 23 or 24 different rites when really there's only six rites, but 24 churches are part of those different rites. So sure, yeah. we don't want to get too complicated there. Of course, yeah. Um, but maybe you can kind of break that down because even yeah. though you're just south of us or you grew up just south of us in SoCal, we're in NorCal, um, you know, culturally heritage wise and even your experience with the catholic faith obviously was a little bit different yeah um so like he was saying there are different rites so r-i-t-e meaning it's like the root word of ritual so Mm -hmm. when we go through and celebrate the mass um, which is the you know what we do every sunday where um we partake in holy communion and whatnot 
um, that looks a little bit different. The substance and everything is the same. The Chaldean Catholic Rite, we believe the same things. We, we are one in communion and we run in faith. We're one in everything that we believe. We're one that we be, like we're under the jurisdiction of the Pope, who is the, uh, the visual head of the church. Mm -hmm. um, however, we, it, we're like a different flavor of Catholicism, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Whereas uh, in the Latin rite or the Roman rite, you, you know, things look in a certain way. You pray in Latin. That's like the liturgical language or sometimes it's translated in English or Spanish or according to the local country or the local place or language that they speak. Whereas in the Chaldean Catholic rite, um, we find our origins um, where St. Thomas, the apostle, he... Uh, received the gospel from Jesus Christ and he was called to preach to the four corners of the earth. St. Thomas made it to Mesopotamia, um, which if you're not familiar with Mesopotamia, it's modern day Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and a little bit of Iran, I guess you could say, the land between the two rivers, that's what it's called. Um, and he ended up there with um, arguably uh, this one of the saints named Mar Adde, St. Adde, and St. Mari. Um, St. Adde is thought to be like Jude Thaddeus, one of mm. the 72. Mm -hmm. So Ed Dei, Ted Deus, te, uh, Thaddeus, I guess you could say. Um, and th the seed of the gospel was sown in that land. But the way it grew, the way it blossomed was a little bit different. The way it blossoms in the West is a little bit different. Um, but the seed is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, the faith is the same. Um, we have the seven sacraments. We are a sacramental church. Some people, when they come to our our, our mass, they're like, "I'm Latin, right? Catholic. Is it okay if I receive the Eucharist here?" Like, and then we're like, "We're Catholic. Like, what are you talking about?" <laughs> um, but our liturgical language is Aramaic, which is the language Jesus spoke. Um, so some people they say, "Yeah, we speak Jesus's language," but then if you ask like one of our hardcore priests, uh, Father Michael Bazi, shout out to him, he says. Jesus spoke our language, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, our language is, and our liturgy is in Aramaic, um, even though sometimes, like in Iraq, sometimes it's translated to Arabic to for people to understand, uh, you know, that's the, the, the national language. Um, in America, we, we translate it into English, um, and maybe in other countries where we are. I actually have cousins in, um, when, we, when they left Iraq because of persecution, I, they left... Wherever they, wherever the place that would accept them, so they would go to Canada. I have cousins in Canada. I have cousins in Michigan. I have cousins in Australia. I have cousins in Germany. Uh, so I have cousins all around the world. So the Chaldean Catholic Rite used to be like to a particular region. However, Thomas kept going. He kept going all the way to India, and so you'll see our church present in India now, where we where we we pray. We have the same prayers and we have the same flavor of our right of catholicism but um you know it's done in in india which is the syro malabar church mm -hmm. um actually we have like remnants and like historical uh, uh artifacts in china so our wow. missionaries went all the way to china wow. we're known as the persecuted church um and even till this day um from the moment of our uh, conception and when we were when the church was founded in our place, in, in our land, we never stopped seeing persecution. And even until this day, we have modern day martyrs. Um, you know, I have lists of martyrs that uh, have died for the faith even today. Mm -hmm. So I visited about two years ago, and uh, I mean, January of 2019, mm -hmm. and I visited in uh, July <clears throat> of 2018 before I became a priest. And I saw villages completely destroyed, churches completely dismantled, places where, you know, the faith was really alive and people would be baptized and be brought into the faith in choirs, youth groups, everything. In a matter of one day, because of the extreme nature of the, the terrorist organizations that were working, <clears throat> it completed, completely dismantled and attempts of erasing history were, were at work. Mm -hmm. But as we are, we know we're, we're people of the resurrection, so... Our people are returning to their villages slowly, and some have left, and some have sought, you know, freedom elsewhere. But um, churches are 
restored and, and are being um, renovated and brought back to life. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's one of the things I know I, I personally try to share um, it, that's close to my heart is just the, the, the martyrs of our faith, right? I mean, uh, here we are in America and we have, you know, first world problems. Yeah. Um, you know, we were talking about it yeah, too, yeah. Uh, the, the other day about, you know, and, and I think we need to be concerned with the attacks on Christianity for the first time in our um, American history. We're in a post-Christian era, right? We were founded on Christian values and principles. and um, But the, a lot of our brothers and sisters, you know, I think about the Middle East. I think about China, right, in particular, that are... Lebanon, um, even right now. Yeah, Lebanon right now, what they're going through. Um, and you just you know it puts things in perspective yeah right for somebody to live their faith in iraq is a lot different than us you know walking out the door and saying like even us having a podcast right now yeah and talk calling it peace prophet king bringing a priest you know and walking around in cassocks and clerics and all of that is so different in the places where our brothers and sisters are persecuted and we should never stop praying um for our fellow brothers and sisters Mm -hmm. that um honestly are are living out of faith that we take for granted every day. Yeah. And I think uh, sort of what brings, what, you, what piggybacking of what you were saying is, uh, I remember seeing a tweet from Father Andy Young. I mean, <laughs> he, came, he came to our mind twice in a row. Um, you could see how his influence is uh, pretty, pretty big. Uh, he was saying like, if you know, a church is vandalized in America and people responding saying, it's the end of the world, you know? <laughs> And then complete villages and cities are destroyed uh, and Christians are, are being massacred and uh, killed. And then, you know, they just get back up again and they're just living out their faith. You know? They rebuild. They rebuild. So, like, we've been seeing this for 2,000 years and we're just trying to, like, make it back. It's not the end of the world for us. I mean, it, it might be the end of this building or it might be the end of this part of our lives but then again we 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 move forward so Mm -hmm. again like we can't overreact when we see the rest of the world how how it's going on and how it's living and like how the faith is being expressed there um it kind of puts everything in perspective and calms Mm -hmm. us when we see like okay this is not like the end of the world maybe Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah i just watched um for greater glory you guys need to watch it. All our listeners need to watch that movie. But I watched it with my fiance and her sisters. And just speaking of like the persecution and, you know, those who are willing to die for their faith. And um, my future sister-in-law said, you know, it was just kind of shocked watching this movie. Like people are, were actually like willing to die for their faith. Like in the moment, you're going to be free. All you have to do is say death to Jesus Christ. And nope. Yeah. a 12 year old that even you know, if that, you don't mean it exactly even if you don't mean it, it's okay just, just say it and they're like nope and i want to die and it, that idea i think that's so foreign to us in the u.s that that faith that you're ready to die for i think we have a faith that we're ready to post for that maybe we can make swaggy hats of a faith that will make a lot of money for us but a faith that we're willing to actually die for and be alone at the end is like so foreign to the united states and i think that's so important to understand like around the world we are we're being persecuted and i think we're so blessed to be catholic in the united states and we take so many things in this country for granted that like we have a duty to spread and defend it even more so because there's people who don't have that opportunity elsewhere and another point i wanted to bring up too is you know you're talking about the different rights and you know we have different flavors and i think that's the beautiful thing about the catholic church but we're still under the same jurisdiction we still follow the vicar of christ the pope Mm -hmm. which is where i think it gets lost in our protestant brothers and sisters who have their own flavors their own whatever they want but there is no there's nothing tying them together and Mm -hmm. it becomes chaos Mm -hmm. right and it becomes disordered because now you have thirty thousand plus churches that yes have their own flavor yes do their own thing but who's bringing them together where's the unity and and you know jesus is bringing he he wanted his church to be universal, to be Mm -hmm. uh, united, right? And to be one as he's one. Um, And so I just, I was thinking about the different rites and how, what a blessing it is to have those different cultures within the rite, but still following um, the teachings of the church, still following the jurisdiction. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say just because, you know, this week in particular, right, we just tonight we celebrated the we're recording us on the, the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. So we got to celebrate the Chaldean right with you. Um, and Sunday, uh, Nicole and I got to join you for for Sunday Mass as mm -hmm. well. And and we've been to the Byzantine right. And and we love the Eastern the Eastern uh, aspect of our church, you know, our church family. So to Keone's point, and we've been to World Youth Day and been to Rome and five other countries where we participated in the Mass when we were there. When you think about Catholic being universal and you see, you see the breadth and depth of our faith in people, right? When, when, when Jesus gave us the, that, the great command, right, in, in Matthew 28 to, to baptize all nations um, in, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and we can actually see and experience that. I mean, we're, I mean, I know we're blessed in our area to have the Chaldean church sitting in here um, and be, I mean, literally it's, uh, you know, 15 minutes from where we are. And to have both the Latin rite and the Chaldean rite there is just, it's amazing because it shows the universality that what grounds, and the other point, you know, we talked about the um, the mass and, the, and really the, that's the highest form of prayer for us. So even though we're sitting there in a foreign language to us, um, you know, the language that our Lord spoke, right? Um, it, which is amazing. And, and by the way, uh, you know, the Chaldean right folks, um, their chanting is on, is just amazing, right? Yeah. So, so Father, Father Peter's got some bars, by the way. So if you go to uh, a, an Eastern right, um, like the Chaldean right, and you just hear, uh, you see the reverence and you hear the chanting and how, um, I don't know, to me that just li uplifts my soul, but the things that unified us, right? Like I think about the things that we knew to do, even though it's in a foreign language, the, when it comes to the consecration and when it came to the different aspects, the Our Father, when it came to the things that we knew the about structure, to happen, yeah. yeah, that were about to happen. And um, it's just beautiful. Like it just, it, 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 whenever I participate in something like that, it actually... Um, strengthens my faith and increases my faith because I see the remnants of St. Thomas, mm -hmm. right? In the, and the work that he did to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's powerful. I think that's, it goes back to our first point and when we were saying like how the priesthood shines in, a, in the personality of a priest, I don't, I don't even think St. Thomas knew what was about to happen oh, yeah. and what he was doing. But nevertheless, he just followed the voice of Christ and stayed obedient to him. He did his thing, and then he ended up being martyred. And then the blood and sweat and tears that went into his priesthood and, and into his episcopacy, ultimately, um, you see the fruits of that today. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the fruit and, and because of the merit of Jesus Christ working in him. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, we don't know how far our sacrifice might go. Or, you know, we don't know how long it might last. I mean, if for one person we can sacrifice and you know bring to heaven and bring the beautiful gifts of the, of of Christ and His Church to them, everything would be worth it. But then Christ does so much more with our our weakness, and He does so much more with our sacrifices. There's actually a cool story. Of one of our saints, his name is Mar Shimon Bar Sabai, meaning uh, his name is Saint Simon, um, son of uh, a garment stainer. So that's what the second part. Shimon means Simon. Um, so he was a patriarch uh, around the fourth century, and patriarch. So just to f f just to let you know. So in the hierarchical structure and leadership of the church, for us we have patriarch. Uh, um, we have the Pope and then the Patriarch, who is like the head of the bishops uh, of the church, and then the bishop, and then you have priest, and then so on and so forth. Whereas in the Latin Rite Church, you don't really have patriarchs. You have, you have uh, priests, or you have the Pope, and then you have the College of Cardinals, which our patriarch is actually the cardinal, um, but that's just like extra. You know what I mean? When they said... Well, like, you know, we want to involve you and make you a cardinal. He was like, I'm already a patriarch, <laughs> homie. Like, <laughs> uh, but I mean, it just makes, allows him to, you know, be part of the, the process of, you know, electing the next pope. Mm -hmm. So this patriarch, um, Marshimon Bar Sabah, 
he was actually um, in a, a time of per persecution where they were trying to collect taxes. And so they told him, like, you know, collect taxes from your Christian people. You know, I mean, everyone was not Christian. They're all, um, I believe they worshipped fire. You know, Zoroastrian, I think. I'm not sure exactly. But um, he said, I am no tax collector, but a shepherd of the Lord's flock. This is what he responded. And so the the Shah, or the Shah of the Persian Empire, which is what they were part of, um, he just like full on went open season on Christians. And especially the clergy. So he took this patriarch along with bishops and priests and executed each of the priests in front of him mm. and then him last. And within, I believe it was, uh, you know, one generation or so, but it was about 40,000 or something like that, Christians were killed and uh, martyred for their faith. Um, if he would have just said, you know, collected taxes and stuff like that, and if he would have just... You know, had them renounce their faith in, in some way, um, they that wouldn't have happened. But instead, you know, his his martyrdom and the blood that he shed today, we live in order so that does not go in vain. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's the fourth century. If I go to the to twenty, sorry, let me go two thousand two. We had, or, or I don't, I'm not sure I'm getting these years right. We had a nun that was beheaded and killed in Iraq, in Baghdad. This is not even 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We had a bishop, I believe in uh, 2000, let me see, I'm not sure exactly which year, 2008. 2008, this bishop was kidnapped and killed. Bishop Polus Faraj Raho. He was the bishop of Mosul, which is modern day Nineveh. Where, wow. where Jonah went. A year later, um, a priest and three other subdeacons um, were shot and killed in front of the church right after Mass. And uh, actually, um, that priest, Father Raghid Ghani, um, his cause of canonization has started. Oh, wow. So, like, um, finally, you know, it, we know he's a martyr, but the official representation in the universal church has begun. So, yeah. yeah, it's pretty powerful. I think just for the the listeners out there, especially when you think about the word martyr, right? Somebody who dies for the faith in Greek, it's witness, right? Same thing in our language. In Aramaic, it's sahada. So it means to witness something, but it also means to die uh, for Christ. And and ultimately, if you are witnessing for the faith, uh, you you will pay that price, right? And and mm -hmm. some some will say we call, in the church will you hear about white martyrdom or red martyrdom? And what Father just described was red martyrdom, right? They died for their faith, and white martyrdom is what we may be experiencing when you know we put ourselves out there as faithful Catholics and people you know snub us or attack us and you know go at home Kill and our, some, yeah try to go after our soul or our our um, you know whatever it may be. Um, publicly, but we're not dying for that faith. Mm -hmm. So, Father, just as you know, we tried. Did you have something to say? Mitch? Yeah, I got okay. a couple of things. Go ahead. I was thinking um, one a little bit about what's happening in America, but two, I was just thinking about when you're talking about feeling the remnants of uh, Saint Thomas in the Mass, or you know, when we discuss Latin, just feeling the the faith of our fathers, the yeah. faith of Jesus Christ. When you feel that, and I don't want to feel the faith of Chris Tomlin in Hillsong <laughs> when I'm in Mass. Yeah. You know, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear oceans because it's not. That's not what we are founded on, that, that kind of idea. And something we talk about so much is like, that's the reason why that mass is so important and why losing it or it not being practiced as much as it should be is so detrimental to our faith. And it's 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 hurting because it's like, here we have, I mean, if you listen to, um, you know, the Chaldean, or I was listening to, I watched a video of, um, in Lebanon, a priest offering mass while the, the bomb went off. But just hearing their chants and just understand that that difference in your heart that you can feel oh, yeah. for that three seconds that I heard it, rather than uh, you know brother Mike on the guitar playing oceans, it's just such a different experience that we deeply need in our, in today and to feel something different that we talk about all the time. But I thought that was a good thing to point out, and also the um, almost like blind, very philosophical persecution that we've had of Christianity in America of just. Um, years of philosophy kind of taking out God, this very uh, modernist approach of everyone has the same kind of religion. That's 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 what you want to do. I think Biden just said we need to learn more about Islam and in our uh, schools. 
and just this slow kind of thing until it gets to the point where now people are taking out statues now people are doing this and that people are checking out parishes trying to see well what time's going on here um you know uh defacing some of our some of uh, our lady and all this kind of stuff and it becomes a point of like now we're facing something real but it's also not so it hasn't been physical in the past it was so under the radar that we couldn't we couldn't see it right and so mm -hmm. it was like you know, we have JFK as a representative of what Catholic life is supposed to be in America. And just this idea, like, it seems like it's always been undermining this kind of not understanding what the faith is and taking out public prayer in schools and all this kind of things that we continually kind of did and everyone's just blind to. And eventually now we're at the point where we're seeing it full on and they're not hiding anymore. And so just realizing those things is like, yeah, we should be thankful and more serious about our faith, but also understand where it's lying and so we need to be able to spot those things out because they're very under the radar they're very um well no no no. Uh, Karl marx really cares about the people does he though why does he talk about destroying the nuclear family what does that have to do with the, with saving the poor people what does that have to do with the, so those things that we got to be more keen about mm -hmm. and understand because it's not just people kidnapping for ransom it's not people doing those kind of things they're doing it more sly so that's the point where you know some people argue about having um you know freemason infiltration whatever stuff those things that are almost more powerful because they're almost tricking the mind and fooling all of us into this point where now it's like uh a different sort of persecution you know the, the white martyrdom it is and so there's two different battles you have going on you have ones that are you know really dying for it and this other one where it's a very strong mental game that we have to be prepared for and and battled and tested in different ways and prepare ourselves in different ways yeah or else you wake up to the reality that a lot of our brothers and sisters are where now you have you know, a communist country or a dictator that is anti-Christian and anti-everything that we stand for. what does it start with? Yeah. It starts with the same things. So you take out prayer, take out all these things, you legalize all these different things that people say, no, man, we're just for the people. These people have their rights too. And then you get to the point where now it's, now we see what it really is. Yeah. Now when they're defacing Mary, then we say, oh, okay, that's what it's about. It wasn't about you fighting for this group or this oppression or this and that. It's not, never what it's about. Yeah. It's always about attacking the faith first. Yeah, get rid of God and get rid of definitely public enemy number one would be the Catholic Church for sure. Mm -hmm. So, Father, as we kind of wrap this up, um, and we knew we were going to spend a little bit of extra time with you, which is good, and I think good for the listeners to kind of get introduced and to experience, right, the, the human side of the priest. Um, do you have any uh, parting words for those that may be where you were, where you're just kind of searching for... Hey, what you know? What's what's life really about? And all of a sudden, here you are in the collar and offering the, the the holy sacrifice of the mass and really giving your life to God to serve His bride, the Church, all of us, and we get the benefit from that. Because you know, with really, if if we're really honest about it, um, even though there's a small percentage of priests in the church, we can't have our faith without the altus Christus, right? Without the the other Christ, like mm -hmm. yourself. So. Um, any, any encouragement or words of, of advice you want to give to those that may be seeking a vocation? Yeah. I mean, where my vocation, I guess you can say, began was when I wasn't afraid to ask questions, when I wasn't afraid to, um, you know, challenge myself with the things that maybe don't make sense, maybe are hard to understand within the faith. I think it was then that I was able to see beauty. I was able to make it through and see the free, the truth of the church. And maybe like I was misunderstood and thinking like, oh, the church is against us or the church is a dictator and doesn't want me to be happy. Uh, and in reality, at the end of it, I saw, you know, if you give your life to Christ, it's really, you're living your best life, yeah. to be honest, because Christ, he challenges you. You know, he doesn't want... Um, you know, if, if the faith was made a little bit easier for us, um, then that means the church wouldn't th think highly of us. St. John Paul II was always known to not water down the faith, um, but rather he, he believed in the youth so much that, you know, they were inspired to take upon all these challenging things of the faith. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so for me, where my vocation began, when I guess my advice for other people um, that are maybe in this situation is that um, if you're if you have questions if you have certain things that you want to be uh, answered I mean you'll find them in the church if you've had a question there's a hundred percent chance 
that someone else has had that same question as you. Mm -hmm. And there definitely is an answer. Um, keep digging and uh, Christ will not let us down. Um, and just make, just make it a prayerful thing. Make it something that you're open to. Always be open to Christ because if you're not open to Him, um, you're missing out on the great glory that's to come. And just like St. Paul says, no eye has seen, nor ear has heard what God has planned for those who love Him. Mm. So just, I like, uh, I think, what's his name? I'm forgetting his name right now. Uh, Saint, uh, uh, Blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati, mm -hmm. Verso Alto, to the, to to the, the heights. Top, yeah. To the heights. To the heights. So, uh, Verso Alto, third order Dominican, by the way. Shout out to Blessed out Pierre. To <laughs> <laughs> so, Father, before I kick it over to Meeks for the, the last, the last uh, shout out, can you uh, maybe do a, a prayer, a blessing in the native language? Yeah. Um, why don't we do this? Okay. So we'll do it. Um, I think this is present also in the Latin, right? I mean, it's a universal thing. Mm -hmm. I'll say it both in Aramaic and in English so that people know what's going on. Yeah. But I'll do this. طيبو ثدماراً إشو عمشيحة وحبد آلها بابا وشو تابو ثدروحة قدشة هاوي أمت كلاً May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, at all times, and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Father. It was a joy. We're going to have to get you back in the studio again because time flies when you're just having fun talking to your priest friends. So we appreciate you. We appreciate your priesthood, and we appreciate you spending some time educating us and our listeners on you know your story your conversion yeah. and for our eastern brothers and sisters out there i also want to thank you guys for having me on here uh, and thank you for your friendship and you have definitely uh through the fire that you have for christ you really inspired me to become uh that that priest which is continually on fire knowing that his priesthood is uh you know is appreciated and i uh, thank you also for your prayers because i know you guys have countlessly said that you are praying for me and um, I do see it and I experience it and I feel it when I'm uh, in my life. So thank you for having me and I thank you to your to these listeners that have been listening for this long of a time <laughs> if you made it this far. <laughs> yeah, and if you have made it this far, you should be liking and commenting and subscribing because you guys aren't doing it and I see you. I know every one of you that aren't doing it. <laughs> and uh, go follow our Instagram once again at priest.prophet.king. Uh, if you really want to help Father Peter in that way too, and we got to give a little bit of shout out because Colin did come through again. We got to shout out Christopher. We got more comments. Sergio, people stepping up. We people are stepping up. Colin's so back <laughs> isn't hurting as much this week. Yeah. So, so we appreciate it. And again, thanks to Father. And I, I figured if we hung around with you um, long enough, I could probably get a beard game as as sick as you and the rest of uh, our Chaldean Assyrian brothers. Keep praying, keep praying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, as Biko said, we appreciate you guys joining us. And uh, we just ask that you continue to share, like, comment, subscribe, get it out to everybody you know. Continue to pray for our priests and pray for more vocations to the priesthood. And until we see you on the next episode, get holy or die trying.